you, Zudzi. Aw. I know sometimes it's hard being at home and being in quarantine. You might feel a little lonely and a little isolated, but uh, I think everybody is really happy that uh, we're all coming together for this great cause. So thank you again so much for watching the stream and being here and all, sh all showing all of your support. It really means a lot. So thank you. Thank you. All right, and with that, we are actually going to start the run. So uh, let's let's get to it. Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic. Is that us? Are we on? You're All on. Right, well, yes. Awesome. Hey. You're on. Hey. Hello. <laughs> Hi guys, uh, my name is Chaos Stripter. I'm the current world record holder for Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic run, and I'm dr brought with a few very important people with me here tonight, uh, featuring Lane, who is one of the main glitch hunters for this game. Hey, I'm Lane. I'm also brought with uh, one of my main competitors, 30 Cents. Hello, I'm 30. I am main Chaos's main competitor for this game and former world record holder. And then I'm also brought with Indy Kenobi, who did a lot of help with the routing and has uh, got a lot of history with this game. Yep, I've been running this game for longer than I care to remember, so I'm here for the history. That's right. And he's now the new world record holder in No Major Glitches, so there Ooh. is that. So That is not this run, though. That is not. Um, we probably will be talking a little bit about that later on, though. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just explain what we're doing here for, for class. We're going to be doing a strength-based melee build, um, doing Scoundrel for sneak attack bonus, and then we're going to pick up Guardian for uh, some force jumps later on. So we want to get as much strength as possible, and we're going to need to pass some saves, so we need some constitution, wisdom, and charisma. And then we're going to be using security to open some doors, persuasion to talk to people down, and computer use to work some computers over. And then we're going to pick up Weapon focused melee weapons, which is going to make our early game a lot easier and a lot faster for us, as well as being much more consistent. And I will need to get the donation incentive for the name here. It's in post introduction. Dark Kindness. Okay. okay, so it was officially Dark Kindness. Awesome. Nice. What a great name. Great All right, name. so. Uh, real quick before we do get started though, I want to just explain that this run is incredibly glitch heavy. There is a lot of nonsense that's going to go on with uh, quick saves, quick loads, doing things while multiple menus are stacking up on top of each other, and all of this has kind of been found over the last year. Uh, we're going to kind of ease into it pretty quickly. <laughs> um, the first thing that we're going to do is what's called a hard buffer. You'll see me quick save a few times and then I'll hit the menu that's in the top right hand corner up here and then I'll use that to immediately load the save which will skip a cutscene. Um, and then we'll kind of explain everything from there. So I'm ready um, to start on time. So um, as soon as he hits play. Yep. So three, two, one, go. And Guys, we're just off. one more time. All right, and now I'm gonna do a uh, quick looting of this footlocker on the left. Grab the short sword, and we're gonna go ahead and equip that. Talk to Trask here, and we're going to bring him onto our party as quickly as possible, and head to the door. So if I do this- So basically sequence breaking this section, because sure. it's intended for you to have a multiple conversations with Trask and have him unlock some doors, but we're just skipping right into the action. So it's uh, really third shot. quick start for this game. So all these combat sequences you're seeing him do here, uh, in, even in the cutscenes, they're all RNG based. It's small amounts of time difference between uh, like the random number generation here, but it still matters in the end, especially when you're going for the perfect run. Uh -oh. so, we got an issue. KOTOR's, KOTOR's combat is based on a D20 system. Uh, so every single combat has random. So we just had a little game crash there, but shouldn't be a big deal. But hopefully that doesn't persist. Nevertheless, yeah. uh, the glitch he just did there, um, so this one's actually quite funny. During the load menu for that quick save, he hit Alt F4 of all things, which doesn't actually close the game this thing, except instead opens up a uh, pop-up menu that allows us to unpause the game during other menus because of the nature of doing it during a load screen. 
And this allows him to effectively move his character during that cutscene just then and position himself in this door. And it's going to be used for much more complicated things later in the run. It looks like we're going to have a lot of time to spend here, guys, because uh, we've broken this game so much uh, that a lot of, at least for me, uh, my game will crash pretty frequently and like sure. have a lot of issues with it. So sometimes it'll just get like this. And the, the current uh, PB for it, uh, there we go, and the current PB for it, it's not an issue. Uh, however, it looked like it might be a persistent issue tonight. That's just more time to spend here. The sheer yeah, amount of saving, the sheer amount of saving that we do in this game causes uh, an unfortunate memory leak in KOTOR to trigger over and over and over again. So we actually have to keep an eye on how much memory the program is using while we run. So here oh, he's, doing the, he's doing the first instance of a glitch called Hotshot. So this was found by a great guy, Hotshot Wire, who's really active in the JKA community. And so how this works is, um, we'll get into more detail later, but he's essentially uh, using a save warp to wrong load back into the previous module of the Indar Spire, which, since it's the tutorial section, he still had the invincibility from that. And by doing it this way, he managed to maintain his invincibility for the rest of the game, which is going to be very helpful. Yes. Um, in fact, this one, uh, there's an, actually a new funny trick that we have just found out here. Let's see if I can get it. Oh, right. <laughs> nice. Ooh, look uh, at that. So, oh, yeah. So there's supposed to be this dream sequence here where we watch um, the main character sleep, but it's actually faster by two seconds to not watch it. Yeah, we so, break the uh, camera sequence for that stunt cutscene by doing what's called a free look AMG, which is a little beyond the scope of this commentary, but it, it will come up later. That free look AMG is really tight. You have to do it like almost immediately after you select to go into the escape pod. All right, so here we go. More buffers. And so you see, he has the, uh, are you really, do you really want to quit, and then you pull yeah, up again. Free. Here we're going to do a glitch called pop-up replacement, which is closely related to the menu glitch that we were discussing before. And so what he's doing is he's uh, pulling the pop-up to sell an item out of the vendor, and then decreasing his credits below the cost of that item, so he can put himself into negative credits. And since the credits are an unsigned integer in memory, it allows him to underflow and get essentially infinite credits, or effectively infinite. Yep. Yeah, and I, and I just bought a whole bunch of frag grenades from some random guy in my apartment. Yeah, yeah. Carf tells us to keep a low profile, so we buy drugs and explosives, because, you know, yep. wh why wouldn't we? Well, we're about to go buy some more drugs from, a, you know, an established doctor, so... Yeah. The, uh, um, so now we're going to do a GIP here, yes. so why don't you explain that? So GIP is an acronym. It stands for Gather Your Party. Uh, this game uh, was designed to make you keep your party members with you before transitioning between locations uh, for the sake of an RP, like an RP element. But it turns out the thing, the very thing that prevents us from moving party members around allows us to teleport because of some repositioning they do in order to keep uh, soft locks from occurring. So we've used that a ton in what's called GIP warps to teleport all over the map. I can't believe I missed that, uh, that save there. So we do a uh, quick save and then a hard load there in order to ensure that the main character will follow Karth. Uh, they both get a move speed increase bonus by the adrenal alacrities that we use. Uh, but because of that, it kind of makes it a little bit wonky for the following. So and now we're going to set up for splitting them up again so that way Karth can hit a cutscene trigger that will pull them both together after we kill Largo here. Yeah, so we're just doing some good old senseless murder, good old Star Wars fashion. We want to get to level 4 as fast as possible, and we'll see why we want to get to level 4 as fast as possible. Yes. Uh, two minutes. Nice. Okay. Ready. Okay, so now we're going to loot these guys here because we really need to get that, the Sith Armor. Sure. Ready. Which is yeah. also pretty broken. It's the Sith Armor is a very place. important item, yeah. <laughs> Because it's not just the uh, plot-important disguise that lets us into the lower city, like many of you who have played this game before experience, but it's also used for some very fascinating glitch tech later on in the run. So here, we're doing another gift that teleports us clean across the upper city, saves a good chunk of time. 
and if you blink, you'll miss it, but he just did a uh, return to the hideout and, and transited back there to both set the transit points as well. So we're setting up for future glitches here, and it'll all make sense eventually, or not probably, but. <laughs> the game has a built-in uh, fast travel system, so setting the transit point there means we'll be able to fast travel back what? there uh, at the right time. Ready. Thank goodness they all spawned in. <laughs> oh yeah, that would have been I did not want to have to route in some extra XP for that. All right, great. Hi. There's a chance uh, that all three of those Volkers just won't spawn. And like specifically, there's easy. one that's worth 200 XP. And if he doesn't spawn, then your run is yikes. Okay, this this exact same thing happened to me earlier. So I, I do kind of know a way around this. So let's oh, try this. Oh, we had another game crash just you here. That's really unfortunate. Yeah. This is something that just started happening today, which kind of sucks, but... Uh, That's marathon walk speaking. right there. Oh, yeah. That's okay. Uh, I should be well estimated here. We're going to make a new quick save here, which might fix things, and then we're going to go ahead and into the cantinas, and hopefully this won't crash. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I am so sorry, Chaos. <laughs> Ooh. All right, come on now. You're not getting okay, any mysterious right, files safe. popping up in the directory, are you? Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, future game is currently open. Let's delete that and try one more time. Uh-oh. <laughs> this doesn't All usually right. happen, folks. No, it doesn't. So we're going to just enter in here. Okay, so let me enter in the cantina this time. Oh, man, I could try an experimental strat right now, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Okay, all right, we got it. I guess that sort all of right. shows Backup off strats. the stability of KOTOR, or lack thereof. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's usually more stable than this. Oh, Karth, you followed. You are not supposed to do that. I mean, it wouldn't marathon. be, you know, a marathon if we didn't yes. have to fix the game midway into the run, but... Uh -huh. We call right, these... So... What was that? What? We call all these crashes KOTOR things. Oh yeah, just yeah, KOTOR things. things. Just think of it like that. Though they seem to particularly happen to chaos more than other people. One. So, I did that a little weird, if you played nice. this game, you may have noticed that we just skipped a large portion yes. of it by using a git warp to go to the other side of this locked door in the back base. So we're now killing Jadden, which is something we're not supposed to be able to do until we go all the way through the Undercity and the Volgar base. So we've skipped a lot. So this well, it's time doing... for yeah. something really cool. We got this some keyboard ASMR. Yeah, so I always listen to Mash's keyboard. Uh, this glitch is called the Flu, which is yet another acronym. We really love them here. It stands for Fake Level Up. So what is happening here is we did yet another menu glitch using the uh, AMG trick from earlier. And this time we allowed it, to, uh, used it to um, swap characters during a player level up. Doing this causes the level up to not be consumed and allowing us to level up pseudo-infinitely. There is some limits, but we're not going to really get to those. And this infinite leveling up is going to allow us to maintain skill points through each level. So after loads of minioning, we're going to be able to get enough skill points to do some serious sequence breaking later on. Essentially, we're going to level to 88 and gain three skill points for each level and then dump them all into some important skills. In particular, we're going to put a lot of these points into security, uh, because having enough security actually lets you unlock doors, which are uh, supposed to be impossible to unlock. And that's one of the other reasons that we choose to be a scoundrel at the start, because scoundrel has security as a class skill, so we're actually able to raise that skill all the way up to 3 plus our level. So we're going to stop here at level 88 and be able to get 91 security. Yeah. Um, also, if you want something interesting to watch, on my YouTube channel, there's a video of me doing this glitch on a Guitar Hero controller, which is quite fun. It's, it's pretty <laughs> glorious. And then there's also a, uh, another one on your YouTube channel that you have uh, the 20 second flu where you tasked it. Oh, which yeah, is also really cool. Flu. That's that's also very impressive. Yeah, that's, it's really crazy. Oh, that's so lucky. Cart just instantly wiped one of those backs there. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah go for that guy. Never happens. <laughs> this nice. never happens. One more. 
Well, it, it never happens in a good way. All right, yeah. all right, just take out this guy. Yeah, so that's... So we need to kill four of these guys. Uh, police car? Um, just in case, where's my, uh, don't worry about how many grenades I have. There we go, okay. I really don't want Karth to die here. It's pretty important that he's alive just for, oh, I forgot to, I forgot to do my own split. I mean, I guess my own splits don't matter too much anymore, but. Ooh, secretly splitting in the background. <laughs> so we're gonna make a hard save here for another trick. We'll probably talk about it a little bit later. Yeah. For now. We don't care too much about experience anymore. Uh, the level four was the key benchmark of the run, so we want to get a little experience to make sure that once we recruit Bastila, she can learn force speed. Um, but other than that, we're going to have um, more creative ways of dealing with combat. Yeah. So nice. There's Ooh, only... Open first try. <clears throat> There's only like... Three very important level ups, and that's just well, technically four speaking, because you have to get off of the bridge in the Endar Spire. There's another level up to get to level three, and then another level up. Right. So here's a fun part. We're about to get to the swoop race, which have you ever played this game? You'll, some people remember quite fondly, and other quite others quite negatively. But, for those who remember it negatively, you may have encountered a mechanic in where the developers wanted to go easy on the player. So if you lose the race enough times, you only have to uh, succeed once in order to complete the quest. So here, using this menu glitch and the saving and loading, we are artificially losing three races to allow us to get to the uh, faster single race setup. Which is honestly quite funny. You're, you're supposed to win two races, but if you lose three, the game says, all right, if you can just win one, we'll let you keep going. Yeah. Good guy, nice. Bioware. Now, I'm not actually going to go up to the final gear here on the swoop bike because it's actually slower than the glitch speed that we can get by hitting the pads in a specific way. Um, it's a little strange to explain, but yeah, and, uh, a little bit over my head. Yeah. And it only works on the terror swoops. Uh, I think it has something to do with your engine supposing, supposed to be a prototype. Well, you know what's something I just thought about? I did not pull up my task manager. <laughs> oh yeah, so a lot of times people will run this game with task manager active because if there's, the memory leak is, again, very volatile. So if things go very wrong, you're going to have to kind of bring the game out back and you know take it to a farm up state. <laughs> It's worth, Nevertheless. It's worth okay. noting, despite you having at least 16 gigabytes of RAM or 32 or 64 gigabytes of RAM, it doesn't really matter. It's the game. What? I'm here. Amount of RAM that crashes. Oh, yeah, it's, it's usually 1.5 gigabytes of limit. RAM. So it was that really is very usually. Well, the game to crash. <laughs> so I know I said I wasn't going for any is. new strats, but I am going for a new strat here. Yes? I mean, it's pretty okay. free. Got it. So we're supposed to... Would it be to... one of my runs if it wasn't experimental? We're supposed I mean, to use... Like, uh... did a whole new... <laughs> Good. We're supposed to use T3 to get into the Sith base here, but since we have enough security, we can just unlock the door ourselves, which means we're abandoning the droid on Terrace. Yes. Sure. Big sad. Yeah. We've abandoned yeah. a lot of main characters on Terrace. You may have noticed if you played this game before, you're not seeing Mission or Zalvar right now, and you won't. Yeah. It's a, well, well, we will. Maybe. Ready. What? Well, I mean, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, here's the, uh, basically the last fight in the game. Ooh, that's unfortunate. It's okay. Sure. Yes. Ooh, yeah. Just start throwing grenades. Stunned. Yes. This is probably... So okay, all right. Cool. Bessel also got stunned, but that's okay, because she can throw grenades while she's stunned. This is... Oh, okay. This fight, without a doubt, is the hardest in the run. But, yeah, she's got some pretty good luck here. Oh yeah, you, can, really good. That. you can see the uh, invincibility for the main character kicking in there because he was blown up several times. 
Yeah, we're rather durable oh. in this game. Uh, things stop working again. Oh, come on. Come on, come all you have to do is load a pass. Uh, oh, my future game. Okay, no, 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 okay. So now we're going to hot shot to here. Yeah. So again, so uh, here is where I'm actually going to explain Hot Shot a bit more. So what we're actually doing is we're getting a uh, menu glitch, uh, like we have been before, and we are um, using pop-up replacement to bring the other exit game menu to the forefront, which returns us to the main menu. So this allows us to open the save menu and the main menu simultaneously. So we can have the save menu behind the main menu, which uh, causes us to be able to load into a save using our quick saves location data, effectively being able to warp to any location we've been to in the past, with some other interesting side effects, which we'll get to later. Also, right. if you liked Daphix Estate, it's uh, going to be quick. Yeah. yeah. And we re-equipped the Sith armor here because it's going to be used for later glitches. Which we shouldn't be able to have the Sith armor here, but you know, there we, go. we don't follow the rules. And yeah, a, we also just stole the Evan Hawk while Davik was showing us around, which is also very funny. <laughs> All right, time for things to start getting a little bit more difficult, I'd say. I mean, at least in terms of what the routing is. Most of uh, Terrace is um, pretty like set in stone about what we have to do. But everything from Dantooine on, there's been basically non-stop uh, debate about what is faster. I mean, look at left path versus right path strat. Yeah, Chaos and I have done so many different routes here for this like whole midsection of the game. If you remember the game casually, there's sort of these two intro planets, Terrace and where we are now, Dantooine. And then it sort of opens up and you can go to sort of four different planets in whatever order you want. Um, but with the Hotshot glitch, we're essentially able to do all those four planets simultaneously. And so the routing has become very, very complicated since that glitch was discovered. So and with that, you... I've become a Jedi. Huh? Yeah, don't blink and you'll miss and become a Jedi. We, sure. we basically skip right to sure. having the powers. <laughs> as well as all the plot that goes with it. Yeah. I almost messed up the Jedi Code conversation again. <laughs> Okay, so we really want to take a level up here for um, huh? uh, force speed. speed and effect mind. And then we'll flip back over to Candorous. So we're also doing this thing with um, Candorous here. So Candorous will be standing in one spot, and then the MC will be warping to that place that Candorous wants to go talk to, which gives us a whole bunch of walking. Sure. Now we're going to set up another hard save here. Uh, I should have set that up as a teleport one, but whatever. Uh, and I yeah, missed the fast so strat. Oof. It's okay. It's okay. It's yeah. not that much faster. So if you thought Ray's Jedi training in Last Jedi was too brief, well, I mean, we just did it in about two minutes flat, so, you know, we're kind of <laughs> setting the bar pretty high here. But we do have one test we have to go do, which what? is to go see some lady in the woods. Yeah, some cat woman, you know. There we go. That was kind of slow, but whatever. All right, so now we're going to be doing a new form of buffering called force buffers or soft buffers. Um, so here I'm going to be doing two cutscenes back to back, or really it's a conversation trigger and a small cutscene. But um, so I'm going to be quick saving, and as you can see, I'm not really getting any kind of like quick save length, and there's no like fade in or anything like that because the cutscene's supposed to play. And I can just use a force power, which will allow me to um, cancel out of that cutscene. Yeah. It doesn't work for all of them, but it works for a good majority of them. Yeah. And I'm the, going to return to Evan Hawk here for a transit warp later on, just like we did for um, Terrace. Yeah, the soft buffers work for any conversation in which the main character is the subject of that conversation, because the game is hard-coded to not allow them to be in combat while they are the subject, which using force powers briefly put you into combat, which is why it cancels the conversation. You can actually use force powers to cancel conversations without the buffering, but the buffering makes the timing a lot easier because it delays uh, the trigger execution. So, so now you... since we buffer Juhani stuff, we don't have to do anything with that. And now we'll return to this hotshot location. Um, so it might be worth noting that... Um, oh, didn't work first try. Um, there we go. So it might be worth noting that um, PCs, or uh, 
Actually, yeah. party members will spawn at the location of the save in most instances. Yes. So we use that to our advantage in situations like that and then uh, a few others. Yeah. That fight with Juhani is supposed to be pretty dramatic. And what you'll notice yeah. as we go through this run, that there's a lot of dramatic fights that we completely skip. Skipping fights is kind of what this run's all about. So we're basically at well, the end game portion of Dantooine already, and we've barely been here at all. <laughs> right. Well, we became a, a Jedi, so now we're as close to a pacifist as possible. Right. You we know, don't kill anyone. We're trying, to do our, we're trying our best, at least. As I recall it, there's... So, oh, I am out of... Uh, okay, this isn't supposed to happen. Yeah, that's just a mash. Well, anyway, we're about okay. to run into a uh, trick called the Fast Lane, which was named after yours truly, unfortunately. But anyway, uh, what this allows us to do is using a pop-up replacement trick that I figured out that lets us uh, bring the Return to Hideout or Return to Ebonhawk pop-up to any save in the game, effectively allowing us to use the mass transit system from anywhere which has the added effect in this uh, circumstance right here of letting us clip through walls because this game is pretty bad about figuring out where to spawn the party members after returning uh, from the Ebonhawk. And so just like that, we've clipped the star map and we're ready to hotshot back for some exposition that we will skip as well. So it's also worth noting that hotshots don't consistently work each time on the, the first try. There's a lot of things that can happen in this run, honestly. Uh, so we're going to walk over to Vandara's Bastel, which will cause the MC to warp over, and then we can start the conversation with that. And now we're going to fast lane again, which will warp us back into the ruins, and then we'll fast lane one more time, uh, which will allow us to be put right next to the Ebon Hawk. Uh, we actually, we have time for a donation or two now, I think. For sure. Um, I have $10 from the Swoop Champ that says, The run's invalid if you don't do both swoop laps. Let's go, Chaos. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's still valid. We have $250 from Carve that says, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, you know, we don't want to talk about it either, Carve. We don't want to talk about it either. <laughs> Um, so here we're going to do a trick called a map CS skip, um, which essentially is just we're going to go to the map here and it'll skip the cutscene for us. Out of all the tricks we do, honestly that's one of the easier ones to explain. <laughs> yeah. Um, another thing real quick uh, is with swoop bikes, if you're really into that kind of stuff, we do have ILs for every single one of those. And one of our, uh, we actually have some uh, members in our community that are trying to break that. So if you're really into swoop racing, then go check it out. <laughs> yeah, we, the individual levels for this game are quite funny. <laughs> we also have the Saw Kyles. So if you like playing uh, Star Wars version of Blackjack, um, head there. All right, oh, yeah. now no one talk about the thermals. We, we just, it's yeah, yeah, nothing, we, did, okay? we did not buy any grenades there at all. You saw nothing. Yeah. These are not the grenades you're looking the for. <laughs> uh, we have a time for another donation or two. Okay, sure thing. We have $10 from C-Dubs that says, Hey, Chaos and Company, keep up the great run. Don't forget Bob Straps. One more time. Oh, I'm perfect. Perfect. perfect timing that was on Bob Straps. <laughs> just in time. <laughs> Gonna guess you knew what that perfect. meant. perfect. Yeah, he just oh, did wow. it. Nice. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there's a there's a droid there uh, who we have uh, named Bob. Um, technically speaking, if you do it perfectly, you don't lose any time. But um, oh, hold up, we got to talk to Steve here too. Oh yeah, um, Steve. Greetings, Master Jedi. Master Jedi. I hope you have a pleasant. Um, so uh, yeah, so Bob there uh, is basically Welcome just there you. for us to lose time. But if you talk to Bob, supposedly you'll get better RNG. Yeah. Good luck. Bob All right. and Steve are good luck charms. You, you, can know, you know you've run this game enough when you start naming the people you see along the way. Uh, did I add Juhani there? I did. Yeah, you did. Okay. It did not feel like it. This is another door clip here. We're skipping going to the Monad Sith base where we're supposed to pick up a data module and bring it back. 
but yeah, we don't need to do that. Oh, um, okay, we'll just talk to the guy. Uh, oh, no. That has not happened in a long time. He messed up the swag strats. <laughs> We're also gonna do this too, just in case I somehow mess stuff up. Don't worry about it. Miss a swag strat and do a backup strat. It's like, wow, it's like you're not even a GDQ. Oh, okay, all right. So currently we're in the, the Cell Cat Fight Club down here. Um, essentially, the, the Republic soldiers really didn't want us to know anything about it, um, but they didn't know that we could clip past doors with Juhani, so they weren't prepared for that. Don't worry, we won't talk about Cell Cat Fight Club. If well, you now everyone knows. If you remember Manon, you may remember the slow underwater walking of the scuba suit. So if that ever bothered you, you will enjoy this part. Oh yeah, this was my favorite find. <laughs> this is where fast lane really redeems itself. <laughs> So by fast landing here, we're able to go to a module, we're able to change our equipment. And since we saved the Sith armor, it is considered a disguise in the code, which the scuba suit is also a disguise, but you can't have two disguises at once. So by replacing the scuba suit, we regain our movement speed, and we can run around at the bottom of the ocean under immense pressures without any protective gear. It's also worth noting that the bumper there we did, um, we can't actually use force powers still because we're underwater but we can use the sonic emitter to cancel the cutscene in the same way that a force power works. It's also worth mentioning that usually those sharks we are running past are instant death, but because, no, like said before, we're invincible, the we get, they get to survive. Pure pacifist run, we save the animals, boys. <laughs> That's right. We're doing our best. We're just limping along here. All right, now we're just going to do this one more time. I gotta find it real funny that because you're so deep under the sea and under all this immense pressure and you just okay, yeah. walk walk down there like it's nothing. Oh yeah, the Sith are great engineers, man. <laughs> I know. All right, so normally we're supposed to solve this whole puzzle there with the colorful control and it's like an ethical dilemma and then nah, it doesn't sound worth it to me. We're just gonna skip it, it sounds slow. So now, this is the only star map cutscene that we can't skip, um, because the variable that we need in order to collect all the star maps happens after the cutscene plays, and not at the beginning of it like all the other ones, for some reason. Yeah. Okay. Every single uh, play that we don't need that seems like it was coded by a different developer, so everything's just slightly off. It's very strange when you start digging through it. So now we're going to hotshot back to the Ebon Hawk, which... Uh, will put us right next to the galaxy map, which is really convenient since that's the last place we left. Now we're going to head to Kashik. And honestly, I think Kashik's now my favorite planet with the, the new hotshot uh, method. Uh, yeah. We are going to use force speed here at the beginning because I'm not going to be mean to people. <laughs> So it saves a tiny bit of time to begin doing this uh, glitch called save teleporting, which we're going to be getting to later, but it's very annoying to watch because the screen's constantly flashing with the quick save menu, but we will be using them later. But for now, you're, you are spared. Lane is not spared, though, and my PB, it, it gets a bit abused. <laughs> Basically... Okay, so... Sorry, go ahead. Well, so here we're going to set up Juhani in a specific spot. Okay, and I got the, the timing. It's so that way she will spawn at the correct coordinates to put her into a gippable range in order to hit a uh, in order to hit a elevator, which we can then take straight down. And now we're going to buffer another cutscene. Also, I suppose now is a good time for me to explain coordinate warping. So that's another one of the side effects of Hotshot, the glitch that we've been using frequently throughout this run, well, somewhat frequently, is that assuming they're not out of bounds, party members will spawn... skip, no, guitar skip. Ooh. Yeah, uh, party members will spawn, if, assuming it's not out of bounds, so the party members will spawn in whatever coordinates they were in the module you're hotshotting from. So, we can abuse that in times like this, whenever the coordinates of two modules overlap with one another, to teleport all over sure. the place. And you're going to see much more extreme examples of that later. So we're just going to cat recast for speed. So, even doing the, the consideration. No, I didn't get the jump. 
Ah, uh, so slow. We're walking, guys. We're not using force jumps. What is this? Somebody, A slow run? Somebody say this guy was the world record holder. What? Uh, <laughs> such a disappointment. Oh, happening. did I get stunned? Ooh. Oh, okay. One, one. Ooh. Okay, I thought I got stunned there, but I did not. Did and you I'm want just... any... Did you take the tap contract? <laughs> I did. Ooh. See if you get those good force jumps. You want any... I've got to make it up. Oh, of course, we all jest here. We're very good friends in this little community of ours, and we all have a whole lot of fun. Okay. Yes? So now, similar to before, we're going to have um, Juhani swap places with the MC, but we just have to make sure that she gets added to the party here. Can you please jump, Juhani? That'd be really cool of you. Thank you. Okay. All right, hopefully we'll get one more jump. Force jumps are a little finicky because you need line of sight to your target, and so even if something is lying on the ground that you could theoretically jump over, it won't work. Yeah. All right, and now we're going to. Oh, is there a? Uh... Yeah, there's a load zone there. If you walk backwards by accident. No, no, no. I hit quick load. Oh, hey. that's that's not good. As, okay, we're just gonna redo this one more time. Oof. As the kids say. Only in the Come on, there we go. All right, Jolie, I, I need you to talk. What is it? Jolie, I need you now. It's all right. So, I want to be a marathon run without a little whoa. spaghetti. All right. Yes. I just wanted to make sure that you were very familiar with this section. It's very important yeah. to me that, that totally you know all about Kashik. Yeah. Yeah, we meant to do that. This is an educational experience for us and our audience. Safe management right. got much more important with fast lane and hot shot, so it can be kind of tricky to keep all your saves straight. All right. Second try. All right, I did it. I hit quick save. Great. All right, we're going to fast lane out of here. And that will put us right next to the Evan Hawk again. And so now I'm going to make another hard save. And I'll hot shot back to that location. Um, and so I'm using the quick save that I used in the fast lane in order to get me there. Um, don't worry too much about it for now. Oh, I always get mixed up in the direction here. Yeah, me too, man. Yeah. So because of where the party members were standing in that other module, they spawn right next to the uh, star map puzzle that we have to do. Which, of course, we have the puzzle memorized because we've played this game before. Okay. Now we're going to hot shot back to the Evan Hawk again. Do you guys remember the last time that my game crashed? <laughs> Uh, it was back on Ending of Terrace, I think. I just remembered, I forgot to, um, I forgot to do, do you something. Do. Uh, shh, 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 don't talk shh, about shh, the shh, shh, shh. It's okay, you can just add extra party members later. I'll yeah, be yeah, I, I can fix it. Small yeah. mistakes. Uh, worst comes to worst, you can do it on Starforge. Yeah, worst comes to worst. Anyway, Corbin, Sith World, spooky. There we go. Yeah, so uh, another one of the star map locations is here on Korriban. Um, typically in the normal game, we're supposed to join the Sith Academy and then do a whole bunch of tests in order to prove that we are true Sith and we are actually loyal to the cause. And then we'll get the star map and you know you can do what you want from there. Well, um, we're not about that. We're here to do some breaking and entering. That's right. Uh, now, we do have to join the Sith Academy, though. Unfortunately, we can't just prance on in there yet. Uh, one day, so maybe. Also, I will address, he is beginning to do some safe teleportation here. Which, how this works is that, for whatever reason, uh, as the save file gets bigger in this game, your velocity tends to get in extended in unexpected ways whenever you are quick, quick saving while moving. So this allows us to get these teleports forward, which becomes very effective movement is test at this point in the game. Is it really breaking and entering if we persuade someone to let us in? I was well, about the tomb. Yeah, the tomb is definitely not cool. Yeah, we are definitely breaking some sort of Sith law, if that's a thing. We don't really break anything. 
We just kind of we're teleport. Just, yeah. yeah. We're just entering. Yeah. yeah entering, not breaking. <laughs> Teleporting that, and That's entering. allowed, right? That was uh, Malik's apprentice, Darth Bandon, back there. He uh, makes a brief appearance and is frozen there forever. Little cameo. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess, like, you know, you could say, like, officer, I wasn't breaking and entering, I was teleporting and entering. It's totally yeah, different. totally accidental. Okay. Uh, Nevertheless, we get here to the tomb that has the plot important device inside of it, and we are going to make some saves here. Okay. Yep, safe. and we're just going to hot shot back to the Evan Hop. We don't need the the star map. That's not important. That sounds like something that you know, someone looking for some big magical device that does crazy things that are spoiler territory that I actually shouldn't talk about because you should play this game if you already don't know. Yeah. By the way, we skip all the spoilers. The, the game is so broken, you never experience any. <laughs> And I do Part recommend playing and this game discount. casually if you haven't. It's a, quite a good game. Yeah, it's it's only ten dollars on Steam, so go check it out. This is um, probably my favorite game of all time. Next to Coder right. Two. Coder Two is also pretty good. Whoa. S speaking of Coder Two, if you think this run is broken, wait till uh, you see Coder Two's run. Oh. Yeah, you'll definitely be in for a really good treat for watching a Coder 2 speedrun. That game's even more broken than this one. Yeah, interestingly, a lot of the same tech in uh, Coder 1 works in Coder 2 as well, just with some minor differences that makes it very interesting on its oh, own. Oh, we're, we're here at the star map now, guys. How did that happen? Whoa! Fancy what are you doing, seeing chaos? that. I, I don't know, I was just... Putting party members in on Anchorhead and just, pff, I just ended up there in Gorban again. I, I don't know. That's very unexpected. I'm incredibly shocked. All right. I think that's my favorite coordinate warp since it skips the whole sequence with the Sith Academy and Uthar. Are we look there, uh, oh, who I even is good. Uthar? I don't think we saw him in this room. Oh. Uh, he briefly tries to talk to us and we run away. <laughs> I like that, the, the visual image of that. I hear yeah, you're going to join the so academy. Sure. Ah! No one. All right, and there's Bill in. He says no one, and then that's it. No one enters the doom scene. All right. Uh, that was a good time for a donation or two, actually, while we run across the doom scene. Sure thing, we have $25 from Jinobi that says, Thanks, GDQ, for putting on this marathon. We are all in this together. I'm excited to watch one of my favorite games, KOTOR, in this run. Go, Darth Kindness. And let's we do have, one more. Sure, we have $100 from HK47 that says, Nice job, meat bags. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Unfortunately, okay. we do not get the beloved companion in this game because Aww. he's unnecessary, seeing as we just sequence broke our way into the end of tattooing if you weren't looking. We're just gonna no. do this again. HK47 is essential. Also, we're going to get something pretty important here. Okay. Yes, this is necessary in so many ways. <laughs> I had to go out of my way for it. Yeah, so it's an old tradition Ooh. in this game to get the purple crystal. I can't believe that worked. Uh, also, can yeah. you please? Yes, giving the crate dragon's also been interesting in the past, and that was a very sketchy crate skip. I'm very surprised that worked. You're telling me. All right. We basically need the crate dragon to walk forward a certain amount, or we won't be able to get past it to the star map. And sometimes the crate dragon will get stuck on us as it's trying to go past us. Right, fingers crossed that we got all the star maps here. Yeah, if that goes wrong, then we're taking quite the detour, but I think we're good. <laughs> all right, we're good, we're good, we're good. So yeah, you... just like that, the entire midsection of this game is finished in basically no time, skipping basically all the contents. All right. So let's you see if we get lucky here. Oh, we got lucky. If... Nice. If you remember casually playing this game, there was this a ship uh, called the Leviathan that the bad guys are on. Uh, and normally you're forced to go there after your fourth star map. Um, I don't know what happened to it. I guess it was late. We were too yeah. fast. It never caught us. Yeah. 
Um, that uh, that uh, quit out was actually intentional because my memory is getting was getting pretty hot. Um, yeah. If I had kept pushing it there on my quick saves, especially on Lehan, it would have crashed pretty soon. So here on Lehan, or some, if you've ever played Sculptor, you'll hear it as Ricotta Prime, or yeah, in the game it's called the Unknown Planet. Yeah. Nevertheless, we have massive save teleports here because we're very late game. The save file is quite large at this point. Yes. There we go. Sure. And we're gonna do another gip here, and we're gonna do another gip in just a moment. So we're gonna solo mode yes. again. I'm trying to combine my AMGs with my, my save teleports at this point because the, the file sizes are so huge. And I suppose I never actually said what AMG stood for. It stands for Anywhere Menu Glitch. I've just been mostly referring to it as Menu Glitch as we've gone along. But, uh, That's true. It, the, we, yeah, we really like our, uh, our, our shorthand in this community. Flu, oh, yeah, AMG, so yeah. GIP. I wanted to call Fastlane R-E-H-A-M-G, but Glasnock overruled me. Sure. Oh, thank goodness. That's a... That was a, that was a rough one. No. Worth mentioning, uh, for those who casually have played this game before, you'll notice we sure. skipped the Leviathan, oh, I think we the uh, yeah, we big ship. Oh, did we? Oh. It's right, worth gonna... mentioning twice, though, because that's a it whole is worth giant it is section of the game, and we just... Yeah, it's... Yes? What is it? Oh, dude, get back down here, MC. No? Okay. Uh, okay, great. Uh, Kotor party members not behaving. <laughs> this is a pretty good lay on, although. Everything other than oh, yeah. that. So fun fact, uh, the name of this planet, Lehan, wasn't actually revealed until the Dark Bane trilogy, which was written by the same lead writer of this game, uh, Drew Carpishan, who's a brilliant writer. Thank goodness you were talking there, Lane, because Baslet said a, a word there that we don't want to know anything about. She, she says oh, yeah, spoiler. It, every single second of this commentary was planned out, definitely. We're not ad-libbing in the slightest here. All right, so we're going to do a fast lane here which will put uh, the MC and Juhani over one spot, but Karth will spawn next to that. All right, so now for one of the most important, don't worry about uh, how many things I have right now. Whoop, I messed that up. Uh, oh, purple percent. There we go, all right, purple, great. If you dig back into Speed Demo's archives, some of the earliest runs of this game used the purple crystal, so this is just tradition right here. Not all the PBs do it anymore because time saves, but, you know. I still use the purple crystal in other categories. The Republic fleet. All right, so here we see uh, yet another AMG skip. This, uh, this cutscene here was used to be called the two and a half minute unskippable cutscene until I uh, skipped it around March of last year. So now it's the two and, and a half minutes unskippable, skippable cutscene, which actually, yeah. since I saw that we can, we will. Oh no, what is he doing? <laughs> <laughs> Double purple percent. That's right. So you might be asking yourself, how did he get two purple crystals? Don't worry well, about it. Care, care to also, comment? No. Well, what I'm more yes. curious about, Indy, is what level are you, Chaos? Well, I'm only level five. I, I don't think I need how anything gonna, more. How are you gonna beat Malik at level five? Those castle oh, players really get good RNG. Like level, they're like level 17. It can't be done. Sure. It can't be done, Chaos. It's impossible. No, you should just reset right now. Nothing. It's, it's not, a marathon. Reset? Did someone Malik's, say reset? I'll happily oh, reset. <laughs> yeah, it's marathon over. I think you're what? screwed. There's just nothing you can do. Uh, it's, Malik's it's just gonna over. roll all ones, right? Automatic misses all the time. All right, we both know that Dark V 4v20 never rolls ones. <laughs> what? <laughs> Malo Dolores. <laughs> all right, and so now we're going to make a hard save here for later. Okay, there we go. Jolie's not up. here. This banter here is all glossing over the fact that we are just teleporting past basically all Don't the Don't worry about any of that. That stuff's not important. Don't look at the numbers. The numbers mean nothing. <laughs> look at me, not not what's in my inventory. Yes. <laughs> look at me. I'm the captain now. <laughs> I am the Sith Lord now. This, this right. is the final area of the game, and it's supposed to be this like big fight gauntlet. Um, we're not going to fight much. Yeah, we're pacifists. And we don't fight anyone. Don't fight. 
Also, you notice that he's not safe teleporting anymore because uh, um, please? The, the game save file gets sanitized once you travel to the Star Forge because, uh, well, it's uh, later game. You don't need the earlier save data. Also... Obligatory, that's not loaded? supposed to happen. Or is it the save loaded? Oh, thank God. <laughs> well, I made the hard save right beforehand, so it's not that bad. Oh, good. Yeah, that's right. Also, I, we're doing great on time, so it's fine. Oh, yeah, true. If everything went totally wrong, we could just redo the whole run real quick. Yeah, just the entire thing. Yeah. Sure. Uh, we could definitely do everything from, like, the mid-game on. What? But I think we'll be fine. But I gotta figure oh, out a way how to kill Malik. Yeah, we'll have to find something real quick. We're Maybe we people. could just talk it down. You know, just, it's no big deal, Malik. Like, we can I mean, be friends. Thus far. We've been able to talk uh, to most people. Okay, great. All right. Of course, the, 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 the crashes are gonna start happening again. Oh, yeah, you know, we got to the end of the game, and the game just loses all stability. Uh, not there. It's there. Okay. Isn't so we're redeeming going to... Malik the secret ending? Or are we just oh, gonna yeah. do that? Yeah, we're... <laughs> Let's see. Uh, this is fantastic. Is it not you... It's not letting you hard load either, or is it just okay, the quick okay, loads? Okay. I think it's just the quick loads. So now the question is going to be, can I actually do this? <sighs> I can't believe this worked. If... Mm, okay, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Okay, so now we're going to save over top of deck one, reload our hotshot current save, and now we'll hotshot back to here. So... Uh, we're not allowed to do um, what's coined as uh, hot shotting backwards. Is that right? For, uh, forward uh, forwards. Or? Yeah. So yeah. we need to get a specific set of coordinates back from deck one, uh, sure. which is right at the place that we exit out at. So that way we can do a gip right here, so we can skip a fight with Bass. Uh, sorry, whoever's over there. Yeah, just not an important character. We're just walking past them. It's not important. Anyway, uh, there's Malik, but we don't really feel like talking to him just yet. We're actually going to go around him and talk to his twin brother, Darth Malak. You guys think I should level up? Nah. Nah. It's too late. We don't need to worry about that. Yeah. It would cost time. Leveling up will help you now. <laughs> I mean, level uh -huh. 5, level 6, it's not that big a difference, really. Alright. Yeah. I think I've got a secret strat. New, new strats right here. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I'm excited. Uh, okay, there's a lot of frags now. There's a lot of frags. Oh gosh, okay, all right, nope. Just, uh, just scroll way down, you're fine. <laughs> there are a lot of frags. Uh, okay, nope, okay, there they are. Why'd you buy so many frags? I, well, I only bought like 15. What is he doing? He's throwing thermal detonators at Malik. Okay. Where did he get thermal detonators yeah. from? Oh my god, oh my god, the humanity. There are a lot of thermal deaths right now. Okay, so, oh, okay. So I basically have to have this like pattern here. Okay, fantastic. A pattern of uh, like throwing the grenades and then canceling combat so we can throw grenades again because every single thermal grenade will push Malik back just a little bit. Um, or he'll get knocked straight down, but more likely he'll get pushed away. And so... And yes, you heard that right. We are killing the big bad Dark Lord of the, Dark Lord of the Sith with grenades. Seemed like the most All humane the option. <laughs> yes. Yes. Honestly, well, unless they're Jedi purple. Really a Jedi. Are we Jedi? Like, you know, it's I kind mean, of up for debate at this point. We've got a level on it. I guess. Yeah, we're level one Jedi Guardian. Look, we we, we became a, a times. we be, we were a uh, mass killing homicidal maniac, and then we joined the Jedi, and now I, I think is everything's for the best. We're gonna throw some more here. Don't do that. It's all, all peaceful right. now. Uh, and time is coming up pretty soon. Uh, once Malik's HP goes to zero. Oh, uh, yeah. not like this. Uh, okay. Okay. At least Jolie did his job. Uh, oh, maybe like this. Malik's in a loop. Okay. Yeah. Time's coming up very soon. Um, so this is the the what we really want to see when Malik just gets knocked down over and over and over again. And time. Nice. GG. Uh, end game time was a 44:12. That's not bad. Impossible. 
and with all those crashes. Mmm. <laughs> Aye, aye, aye. Well, that was for the tour. An entire crazy just mess of amazingness. Glitches everywhere. It's, it's beautiful. Beautiful experience. And we've been giving this game so much love in the past year. And it's been loving us back, I gotta say. Um, to if provide you're a little... Oh. Sorry, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, uh, oh, that's an interesting camera angle. I have not seen that one there before. Uh, if you're no. interested in a uh, learning more about this category or knowing more about what's going on with this. Uh, we have a Discord. Um, you can find that on our SRC page. So go check that out. Uh, I also stream pretty frequently right now uh, with all the, the COVID stuff going on. So you can check me out. I'll probably be running uh, KOTOR 2 a lot right now. Um, so um, around this time last year, about how fast was this run, Indy? Oh yeah, that too. Uh, this, this run was about so we timed with in-game time. Uh, it was about an hour and 10 minutes or so in-game time about a year yep. ago. Yep. And so in the last year, we've cut this run almost in half. It's been insane. It's been a crazy ride, and there have been so many cool people that come around during it, and it's just been loads and loads of fun. And we still have so much more work to do. Um, I think that we can get this uh, run down to... Oh, I didn't cancel it because I was Joe Lee at the time. All right, we're going to watch this cutscene. Look, there's there's everyone. Everyone's here. <laughs> you remember those people, like the droid and the Twi'lek girl that we totally saw during this run? Also, there's this big awkward space between us and uh, Candorus for reasons. <laughs> because, you know, the Wookiee may not have made it. <laughs> also, Bastila had another costume change. Right. Well, she's in quite a few scenes. She needs a fast wardrobe. That's true. Anyway, but yeah, that was KOTOR. It's been a crazy ride, and it's been awesome to, you know, show it off here at GDQ, even if it's an online marathon. There is something kind of important coming up from just a moment, though. A very right. important picture. Oh, yeah. There it... Oh, oh. Come on, Karth, just smile for us. Just smile, Karth. So the, they didn't really set the game up so that way they could show the, the smiles of people. And it's really uncomfortable looking. Karth teeth. <laughs> there it is, Karth D10 smile. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching the run. And kill the... Kill it, Red Four, it starts to <laughs> mess everything up. Yeah. We, we don't want the coffee strike from uh, the Star Wars music. No, no. <laughs> but yeah. Hope everything was awesome. What an amazing run by Chaos Drifter of KOTOR. Thank you all for watching that. Um, up next, we have, uh, actually, I'm not sure what we have up next, but um, I'll let everyone know as soon as I know. And uh, in the meantime, we have some donations. We have $25 from Mr. Jack that says, excited that one of my favorite Star Wars games is being run. This is my first ever donation to a GDQ, and I'm happy to do so during a crisis that is literally affecting everybody in the world. Good luck to all the runners, and may the force be with you. $50 from Not a Doc Martin. Let's all be the best meat bags we can be and help out our healthcare workers as much as we can. Less than three. Thank you. And Tech has just informed me that the next game is Max Payne 2 by Matt Matt. So we are getting set up for that. And uh, yeah, so stay tuned for Max Payne 2. We have $25 from Tall Man. Let's fight this great isolation. May the force be with you. 
$10 from Anonymous. First time donating at GDQ. Finally have time to watch the runs. Good luck to all the runners this weekend, and thank you for providing some fun in these tough times. $200 from Corodius168. No comment, but thank you so very much for your donation. We have $1,024 from Yuzuki Yukari. I'm stealing this from someone else. I hope for everyone's safety in these chaotic times. Please keep yourself safe and look out for those near and close to you. Please also hope for the safety of everyone in the world. We all have a part to play and must work together to prevent the spread of this illness. And remember to smile and look forward to a time when all of this is behind us. Aw, that's a nice message. And we are going to take a quick word from our sponsor, so we'll be right back. All right, and we are back. We have $50 from Edward Malice. I think the Sith would approve of speedrunning as it involves mercilessly exploiting every glitch you can in order to achieve your main goals. Love GDQ less than three. $25 from Biospark45. Happy to see you all working so hard to help raise money for an important cause. COVID-19 has appended many people's lives, but it's important that we stay strong and work together. Good luck, runners, and thanks, everyone. Hype? $5 from Andrew's OK that says, Donation train. Choo-choo! <laughs> And we did actually have a donation train come in a little bit. We have another $5 from Dondarf Snowbonk that says, choo-choo, $5 train hype. Every donation counts, so thank you all so much for donating to Direct Relief. $100 from Dejula that says, once again, thanks for doing this. Thank you for watching, and thank you for donating. $25 from Jake Reed. I'm super glad to see GDQ back for a great cause. Let's keep the awesome runs coming. $500 from Anonymous. No comment, but thank you so much for your donation. $100 from PK Alex. No message, but thank you again for so, so much for your donation. $25 from Lion Yeti. It's amazing y'all put this up so quickly to help those in need. Money goes to the Glitch Showcase. And actually, shout outs to everyone that has been keeping the marathon going because I don't think it was an easy task uh, organizing all of this for, uh, for Corona. So thank you again to everyone on staff working so hard to make the marathon possible. You guys rock. We have $250 from uh, Leeds and Siora. My husband and I are working from home, so we want to donate to help those who can't stay. Stay home if you can, and shout outs to ask, shout outs to ask the healthcare workers and essential employees. $50 from Nifty Chris. Massive thank you to GDQ and all the runners staff for some amazing entertainment to enjoy over the weekend while we're all stuck at home. I can donate for a sunshine glitch exhibition, so here's 50 for that. All right, and we are going to throw it over to a quick Twitch ad.
Welcome back, everyone, to Corona Relief Done Quick. I'm Yo BGS, and I'll be your host for the next few runs. Next game is Max Payne 2, and that's going to be run by Matt Matt. I want to remind you that we're raising money for Direct Relief. Direct Relief's COVID-19 coronavirus efforts are focused on the personal protective equipment that are most needed across the world. In addition to providing PPE, Direct Relief is supporting U.S. community clinics and health centers with chronic disease medications to make sure that people living with these conditions do not go into acute crisis as a result of the surge of people needing medical care due to COVID-19. Direct Relief is ramping up efforts to provide the prescription medications and medical resources needed for the most severe cases that require hospitalization and ICU care. You can learn more about Direct Relief's ongoing efforts related to COVID-19 at directrelief.org slash emergency slash coronavirus hyphen outbreak. And with that, we're going to take a look at some of your donations. We had a, it looks like we had a $5 train going on there. A few people saying, like, Andrew's okay, donating $5, saying, donation train, choo-choo. We also have a $10 donation from Kata saying, so proud to support an awesome cause and a great event. Good luck, runners. The $25 donation from Derek253, who says, just started working in the field as an EMT.